Hi right, guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to make another custom inspector. And this time, what this inspector is going to do is it's going to allow us to create en masse prefabs. Now, I just want to start this by saying the rumours are Unity are working on an actual fix for this. So by the time you watch this video, it may already be part of Unity. But currently in May 2021, you can't do this. You can only create a prefab one at a time, which is obviously annoying and probably something that many of us have come across in the past. So like I said, we're going to create a utility and we're going to be able to create as many prefabs as we want with the click of a button. But before we start, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go check him out on Twitter. Go check out his website. Keep up to date with what the guy is up to. And I also just want to thank everybody supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. All right, let's have a look at what we've got. Well, just to start off, the reason this came about is because of necessity. I'm working on my own game and I downloaded this pack of hedges, PS1 style hedges. Really cool. We have a lot of different designs. So I've gone ahead and I've attached the collider to each one of them. Now, the ones with obscure shapes require the mesh collider, but I have some in here as well that are just basic squares can't find one because they're all hidden but uh, yeah I have these basic ones which are just cubes so I've gone through I've added that I've added the material to every one of them and now I want to go and create a prefab for each one of these game objects now originally what I'd have to do is select each one individually and drag that into my assets folder or any folder underneath that because if you try and mass select and drag it doesn't let you I don't know why it doesn't let you because the solution is relatively simple. So let's delete that prefab and we'll get working on our inspector. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to right click in my project folder. I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call that editor with a capital E. Now I have covered this in multiple different tutorials. The editor folder is a reserve folder that isn't compiled with the rest of your project, which is perfect because once these prefabs have been generated, we don't actually need this script in our build. So it can just hide away in our editor folder. Next, we'll create a C sharp script in there and I'm going to call this prefab generator window. Whenever I'm dealing with custom editors, custom windows, I always like to put the window suffix at the end just so you know exactly what you're working with. That's not required. You could just call this prefab generator. You can call this whatever you like. So let's get rid of start and update. We don't need our system collections. We're going to need Unity Engine. We're also going to need to be using Unity Editor. And we're also going to need using system.io. The other two are quite self-explanatory, but the reason we're using system.io will become apparent later in the video. So the first thing we want to do, we want to mark this as an editor window. So instead of it inheriting from mono behavior, we're going to replace that with editor window. Surprise, surprise. Next, we need our static method to actually show us our window when we click the button in the toolbar. So let's create a public static void and we'll just call this show window. And all this is going to do, it's going to call get window with the type of, and then inside the parentheses, we pass in this type, which is prefab generator window. And then finally for that, what we need to do, we need to add the menu item attribute so we can actually access this from a toolbar at the top of Unity. And we're going to give it a name. So as a string, I want the actual folder name to be custom utilities and then this one so slash and i'm going to name this one mass prefab generator perfect now if i was to save this and hop back over into unity we should see we have a custom utilities tab at the top and we have a mass prefab generator but if i click it currently the window itself does nothing because we haven't told it to so the way that we actually start designing our ui is by using a method called void on GUI and inside here what we want we want a label so we know what the window actually is 
we want an input field for a string so we can actually give it a path name to save at. And then we want a button that will generate our prefabs for us. That's it. So let's start with a label. That's easy enough. What we need to do, we need to do GUI layout.label and then in brackets, whatever we want our label to be. So I'm just going to call this mass prefab generator again. And then for the second argument in this, we'll make this a bold label. So that's editor styles dot bold label. Nice and simple so far. And again, the last time I'm going to do this before we actually get into it, if we open a mass prefab generator, we see we have a bold label there now. Perfect. So on GUI is firing. We've done everything correctly so far. Next, we want to take into consideration that path name. So we'll add a variable at the top. That's going to be a private string path name. And we'll give it the default value of prefabs and then slash. Next, we'll use that string in an actual text input field. So what we're going to do, we're going to set path name, a variable, equal to the value of editor GUI layout text field. Then we want to give that text field a name. So that's going to be our save path. And then for the second parameter, we want to pass in that path name variable again. So comma path name. And then finally, what we want to do, we want to add that button in there. So if GUI layout dot button, so whatever code is inside this if statement will only fire if the button is pressed. And then inside the parentheses, we just want to give that button a name, which is build prefabs. So if we press that button, we want to generate the prefabs. So we need to create this method. Now inside generate prefabs, we're going to do a for each loop and we're going to iterate over every currently selected object in our hierarchy. And then we're going to create a prefab out of it. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that the path that we're trying to save our prefabs to actually exists, or we're going to get an error. And this is where system.io comes into play. Because what we can do, we can just check if not the exclamation mark directory dot exists. And then inside the parentheses, we'll just use string interpolation. So that's dollar sign followed by our speech marks. And our actual folder structure is going to be assets, because obviously we need that to save into our assets folder. That one is required. And then we'll pass in the custom path name. So if the custom path name is empty, we're just going to drop all these prefabs into our parent asset folder. If we leave it as prefabs, it's going to create the prefabs folder and then add all of them inside there. So if that directory doesn't exist, we want to call directory.create directory and then pass in exactly the same. Perfect. So if that doesn't exist, we're going to create it before we try and save any prefabs. Next, we're going to call for each. And this is going to be for each game object. We'll call that geo in, and here we can call selection dot game objects. So selection dot game objects is an array of every game object you currently have selected inside of your hierarchy. Next, we want to actually use the asset database to create a unique asset path for us based on our path name and prefab name. So that, we're going to create a local string, just call that string, and we'll call that a local path. And we're going to set that equal to asset database dot generate unique asset path, and then inside the parentheses, again, we're going to use string interpolation here, and this is going to be assets slash whatever our custom path name is, followed by our current game object, so geo.name. So we're going to keep the name of the game object from the hierarchy. And then we need to make sure that we add dot prefab as its file type. Next, we can use Unity's prefab saving utility to actually create this prefab for us. So to do that, that's prefab utility dot save as prefab asset and connect. And what we need to do, we need to pass in this game object, the local path that we've just created, and then interaction mode dot user action, because we're simulating a user action. And if we save that, that should actually be it. 
So if we open up our mass prefab generator, and we can go and dock this down here in the bottom right. And I'm going to give this the name prefabs slash edges. And then we'll make sure we put the slash at the end as well. Now I can go in, select all of my hedges from the hierarchy using shift. Click in the top one, then click in the bottom one. And then build prefabs. This may take a second. But there we go, we see. We've generated a prefabs folder, we've generated a hedges folder, and then inside here we have all of our prefabs done at the click of a button. And there we go, it's just that easy. And what I'll do, I'll put this on my GitHub and I'll put a link down in the description below as well for you to download. So I hope this has been useful for you, I hope you've learned something, and with that, I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching guys, if you like the content remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.